Now, my, my goals are to, to show you how I prepare the wood. It, it's really kind of a story of what I've gone through in the past month or so, really. So, um, and then uh, three, uh, three moves with, with the skew, uh, a planing move and making a V-cut and, and a rolling cut. And then, and then at the end, I'd like to show you how I use the thing. Um, I mean, I can talk about it, but if I don't show you how to use it, I... I, I can, but I, I've really enjoyed doing this, and, and you know, it's a little bit like fishing. Uh, once you catch them, the fun is over, and so uh, once you, you know, learning uh, how to do this has just been a lot of fun for me. And uh, I, um, I've used, um, I've used cedar to learn with because it's very soft, you know. If you try to use something really hard right away and, and, uh, and you're not really familiar with the, with the use of it. So I, so I use cedar to, to do this. You could use, I guess you could use pine, but cedar doesn't have a lot of knots in it. And so it, it works pretty good. And I start out by um, uh, putting a, uh, where did I put that? Over here. I just use a kind of a brad point. Um, uh, drill bit, and uh, then I and I drive it through my what I'm going to use as my um, my handles and my roller, and, um, and then you, then when you do it, you use it like that. Then you don't have to turn a roller and then try to go go through it and make a nice hole right in the middle. <laughs> so I start out with it like that, and. Uh, then I use a driver, which isn't working on this one, um, like this, that I can just stick in, in here like that, and you know, and that'll hold it in place for me. And um, then uh, that's how I, I, I get this thing prepared. Um, then, uh, I, I find the center, or I, I roll it with a gouge. I use a gouge with this. And then I find the center of my roller. And you don't have to, you don't have to make it curved. You can make it flat, you know. Uh, but I thought, well, you know, to, to follow the muscles along, it'd be nice to have it curved. So I did that, and that was... Uh, kind of fun. I, I use a parting tool for that. I bring that down to an inch and a half, and um, the diameter of this doesn't matter. Whatever you want to have the diameter, you can, you can make it there. And uh, then I use a gouge to, to uh, give the profile. And now I use this, this big thing, and uh, here's another experience I learned, and learned the hard way, but 
Um, uh, in order to buy one of these, it cost 168 bucks or something like that. And I thought, you know what? I can't get back that past my banker. <laughs> and uh, so I thought, well, I'll see if I can buy some high-speed steel. And so I talked to different people, and um, one guy says, yeah, I know what. He says, 4140. Uh, so I bought some 4140, and he said, that's high-speed steel. And, and, and so this was fun making this, but uh, it turns out it's not high-speed steel. <laughs> so, uh, uh, so I, uh, but uh, it works for, for cedar. Actually, it works for cedar, and it was fun making it. I enjoyed it. Uh, but 4140 is not the, the one that you want. And um, uh, he, um, the reason for a large, large um, instrument like this is that when you get used to it, when you learn how to use it, there's a, there's a certain amount of thrust that you put into this thing. And uh, with, with heft, you got, you've, got, uh, you've got that uh, thrust. And, now this is a planing skill that I picked up from Darlow, and um, you can um, you can plane with a short end like this, um, it, it doesn't leave quite as nice a, a finish as if you plane in this area. Now if you've got a really long skew, you don't, you don't get that long tip involved in, uh, in uh, gouging your, your work area. And when you go across, take it very, very lightly. And that's one thing I picked up from Joe. Don't try to do it all at once. Now with the storyboard, the ideal for turning beads would make, be, be to make this an inch and a quarter. But to make more beads, I made this uh, three quarters of an inch. And as a result of making it three quarters of an inch, you don't get a nice round bead. Uh, you get more of a, an, an oblique type bead like that. And that's really what I want. Um, I don't really want a round one, but I'd like to have kind of something like that to grab the muscles as you move it. Okay? You don't really want it nice, nice and round. So I, I made mine uh, uh, three quarters of an inch, and where I'm putting my mark on here is where I'm going to do my V-cuts. Now the V-cuts, um, you should take uh, your skew and put it high on the, on the work area and then move it down. And this is another thing that I've worked on and I've worked hours on this, trying to control my skew with my left hand. You see, I'm a, I'm a right-handed person and, and it's like this. And Darlow says that you should use a, a firm grip like this. Now, I'm just saying this is what Darlow says, and, and, and I think that it's, there's a lot of credibility to it. Um, he says that you take your forefinger and put it under your two rests like this and control your, your skew with that forefinger so you're moving like this, and your right hand isn't doing a lot. You're, you're doing most of it with your left hand. 
And uh, that's hard to do if you're right-handed and you've always worked and you're 70 years old, you're always working with... So uh, that's tough to do. So I just about handle this thing. He says to grab it like you would, you know, but I handle it, I hardly touch this, so I force myself to use my left hand. And uh, um, that's not easy to do, all right? Now, the first cut that you do is your skew is perpendicular to your work. So your, your first cut goes through. And you bring it right about to the, the drive axis right there, okay? And Okay, then your, I use four cuts. You could, it depends on how deep you want to go with your V, uh, V cut. Go off to the, I'm going to go to the right, about a millimeter. And, uh, and then angle your skew. You're still perpendicular, but angle your skew at about 11 degrees. Because this right here is 24. And uh, angle that. And again, you're trying to use your left hand. And if you've done it right, it should be, your angle should be about, about what your angle of your skew is if you've done that V right. Now, if you, um, if you take this thing and you go at too much of an angle like this, let's say you start in on, on your... You'll notice... that now... I don't know if you're seeing that... but now the angle of the, of the V is much larger than the one that you really want. So you want to want to keep it perpendicular, and if you don't go far enough, let's say I I uh, do one here, and I start shallow. You notice I don't take. I go a little deeper, but I if I go shallow, I don't uh, make a nice V on both sides. So you want to want to try to learn and teach yourself to use the same the same motion or try to try to teach your left hand to do that and um, my left hand sometimes is a slow learner and I do that and I read someplace that one way to increase your brain to, brain work is to use your left hand when you eat and I thought, yeah, yeah, it should apply to something like this. I'm kind of losing my brain cells anyway. So, uh, I, uh, so that's that's a V cut. I'll, I'll do. Now to, to, to use the, do the curve, use a rolling cut. Again, you're going to grasp that thing as tight as you can. If you're going to roll to the right, you have to hold your skew at a, 
at the angle, the diagonal that will go in like this. And again, you're using your, you're using your, your forefinger, your perpendicular, and you want to move the skew vertically like this, but as you move it vertically like this, you want to push it in to the Now remember, you're trying to use the left hand. I'm trying to use the left hand. And make the, the rolling cut like that. So that's how I make the rolling cut to the right. Start out, you're not gonna make the whole cut first time, you're gonna make the rolling cut maybe three of them. So you come like that. Now you want to make the rolling cut to the other way. Now you grasp the, the, the tool like this with your thumb in this fashion right here like this. And you, now you're going to bring your wrist and move it around like that. And um, Why would you not change hands? What? Why would you not change hands? Well, um, yeah, well, for a reason like that is you're not teaching your left hand something, okay. all right? For me, okay. it was just a matter of trying to teach my left hand to do something that my right hand wants to do, you see? Uh, but people do do that, you know, change hands. But for me, it, I was to try to teach the left hand how to do it. And actually, it, I, I was able to do that. My left hand, although it seems like a, an appendage all by itself, um, wants to do things by itself, it just, um, um, and so I take the, and you have to turn your wrist, and that's, when you first start out, that's hard to do. And uh, Malcolm Gladwell, I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he wrote the book Blank, and he he wrote a book called Outliners, and he said that uh, in order to really become proficient at anything, you have to do it ten thousand times. And uh, so, well, you know, that's a that's a lot of times. Ralph has done it uh, probably twenty thousand times, so he's uh, he's very proficient at doing stuff like this. But um, anyway, um, you take take it and just turn your wrist like that. And it's, um, it's not easy to do it first. And, uh, I, um, um, and you get a lot of, you know, like when you're rolling something like this, and you get all the way to the end, and you got everything done, and all of a sudden, you haven't, you started out too low, and it comes back and it gouges out like that. Oh, you know, those kind of moments. Now, one of the things that I, I, did for practice is uh, I just got a piece of uh, piece of pine and I, I, I put a with my um, parting tool I start here and I just roll and roll and roll and roll and roll and the other way and roll and roll and roll and roll just to try to you know teach that hand how to do that and uh, and, it, and it's actually been a lot of fun I've enjoyed it I've been I've had fun doing it what? I'm left-handed. Do I have to use my right hand? Well, if you want to improve your brain lot, <laughs> yeah, you better do it <laughs> and improve your brain lot. Now, um, that's basically what I've done, the enjoyment I've, I've had with it, um, and I, um, I end up making, making these things. They aren't perfect. You can see that. But now the application of this is um, the, the next thing I'd like to tell you about um, the method that I use with this on my legs, because I have cramps, I get cramps in my legs, I actually get cramps in my arms and stuff like that, um, is that she would, uh, she would have you laying on the floor um, um, using this three foot by six inch foam, and I would get down there and, 
oh, it was, there was something I just didn't enjoy doing. The other things I enjoyed doing, I rolled up my back and arms and stuff like that. I enjoyed doing that part, uh, but that I didn't. I just didn't do it. So I, I thought, well, I got this thing. I bet you I can duplicate that same action using a roller. And so um, what, what you do, and it's hard to see here, is, is the word glide. You notice the word glide in there, like a, like a chair, the gliding chair. Well, what you do, you've got, I work with four sets of big muscles, the calf muscle, uh, the glutes mu back here, the gluteus muscles, and there's, there's littoral muscles in here and the big quadriceps up here. What I do is I glide, I just roll this, roll this thing on that muscle, and I just roll it a couple inches like this five times. That's gliding back and forth. And then I take this thing and I, I shear it across, you know, like, like uh, we would with a, we shear across with the, the, the um, skew. Well, you shear across that same area back and forth five times. And then I just go down the leg, another couple inches, glide, shear, and then I do the whole muscle down like that. But anyway, I thought that's what I would share with you. Yeah. I was going to ask you, you said that you roll on a foam roller? Yeah. I think we had a big wood roller like that. Well, um... You could, you know what, I started out, I didn't want to pay 60 bucks, you know, I was a little cheap, I didn't want to pay 60 bucks for a form roller, so I actually took some two by fours and I, and I rolled them in, and I rolled them in carpet and I thought, gee, you know, I can do it with that, but, you know, that was a little hard on my body, you know, hard on your back and stuff like that. What? Yeah, 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 right, right, so, but I, I, I broke down, I did buy that thing and, and I'm glad I did and it really is. It, it really does help. How different is that than what you're doing with the roller? I mean, Actually, the roller is doing the, the, the same, same thing. thing. Okay. The same thing is, is that, but I, you know, laying on the floor and was trying to cramp and get that through there, I just didn't enjoy it. And this, I can just sit there, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, you know, and a couple minutes. Any other questions? How do you do that on your arm without having to do this? And my arm. Uh, well, that, that's, a, that's a good question. Actually, I've made, I've made some smaller ones. But um, w one of the things that she does with, that I've learned is to use little, you know, like these goofy balls like your kid used to play around with, you know. And you just move those things in different ways and you roll them, you know. And I, in this smaller one that I made, I kind of just push it all the way and roll it on. What? Part? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For the, for the handle, yeah. How do you get those to where they don't go in farther once? Oh, I, I, yeah. I epoxied them. Oh, okay. You know, I just, I used a, I used a rod like this, okay. you know, and I put that rod through there, and then I put epoxy here and epoxy here. And, okay. and, so yeah, yeah. Yeah. Handles. Yeah. So if you, you, you know, you guys might not have any problems with it, but you might know somebody that does. The older you get, it seems though, leg problems are, get, get prevalent with you. Yeah. On the skew you made, uh, the edge of it is sort of round. When, when, when you do that plane thing, can you use a skew with a straight edge, or does it have to be a round? No, no, no. You can use a straight edge like that. And now, uh, when he, uh, Darlo says that this, this angle right here should be about 70 degrees, you know. Uh, so that's, that's what I, I made it, 70. And I've got it rounded, the tip rounded a little bit like that on this one, on the other one. It was, it was you know, I enjoyed, I enjoyed this whole process, you know. I haven't really caught the fish all the way, but I, I've got a lot more to, to, to play with. And, um, uh, but I, I, I have enjoyed it. I, I wish I could get some high speed steel someplace. A2 steel. A2 steel? Okay. A2 steel. A2 steel. At product, where is that? 
A torch. I got a set of torches. I have you. A2 steel at where? Production tool over on 44th Street. By okay. Harrison. Call them up first. Make sure they got the right thickness. Okay. I buy the wood by 30 seconds. I oh, am. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. Okay. This video was made possible by a grant from the Future Girl Foundation. This video was made possible by thousands of private donations from members and viewers like you. Please visit thegeekgroup.org for more information on how you can donate and become a part of our dreams of Avalon.